just kissing the whole face. It's like, all right, all right, all right. Okay, well, I think we can challenge this again again. Right? But you end up walking off, so you ain't get the answer. Right? I, and I want to say, what happened to you, I feel sorry. I'm sorry that that happened to you. But check this out. The answer is, do you forgive? Matthew 5.22. And the answer is, hell no. You don't forgive. And that's according to the Bible. I want you to listen to this. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 22. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause. This is for those who's angry with their brother without a cause. You have a legitimate uh, cause. Okay. You've been violated. Okay. So you're angry and you have a cause. Keep going. Shall be in danger of the judgment. That person is going to be in danger of judgment. Keep going. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rakar, shall be in danger of the council. Uh -huh. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Keep going. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar. Now, this is for the men that went ahead and violated you. Because I'm pretty sure they might go ahead and go and pray to the Lord and think they're serving the Lord, right? This is what the Lord saying. Keep going. And their remembrance that read, thy, read, read, read. Go back a little bit. Therefore, if thou shalt bring thy gift to the altar. Uh -huh. And then remembrance that thy brother have ought against thee. So now the Bible is saying for those men, before they go to the Lord, they got to remember what they did to you. Keep going. Leave them thy gift before the altar uh -huh. and go thy way. First to reconcile to thy brother and then come and other thy gift. So they said first. They got to go ahead and reconcile and get right with you and say, you know what, miss? I messed up. I'm sorry. But until they do that and they apologize and they repent from it, no forgiveness. Let's see what God says. Give me Revelations 18. Let's see if God forgives their sins. Because, I, I, sis, I agree with you. What happened to you, it, it's a tragic thing. And I, I, I don't want it to happen to nobody. But let's see what God thinks now. Revelations 18, give me verse 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 3. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Uh -huh. And the kings are talking about all the nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel. All the nations, they drunk the wrath of the fornication. Today, here in America, you could worship Satan openly. And you could claim yourself as an atheist. You could go ahead and claim yourself as no gender. So they say, now read it again. For all nations have drunk of the wine of wrath of her fornication. Uh -huh. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Right. And the merchants of the earth are waxed. Right. A wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So this is talking about America, Babylon the Great. All the nations have went ahead and went into fornication, right? Let's see how God feels about all the nations and the people that sin. Keep going. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin. So this is God warning you. What she said your name is again? Dream. This is God warning you. Dream say, come out of her. Come out of these people. Don't be partakers of their ways. Keep going. And that ye receive not of her plagues. Don't receive her plagues. Because uh, America, this world is going to be judged. The people that did wrong to you, they're going to be judged. Keep going. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Meaning God say he had enough. God is watching what's going on on earth. And God is saying, yo, he has enough. They reached up to here. Like that old saying, yo, I'm, I, I'm not here with you. I had enough. God is saying, I had enough. Your sins reached up to heaven. Keep going. And God has remembered her iniquities. God is saying, I remembered your iniquities, meaning I remembered your sins. No forgiveness. So until those people 
They get right and they sincere with a contrary heart saying, Sister, I apologize. I'm sorry for what I did. I want to get right. There's nothing I can do that I can take back what happened, but I'm sorry. Until then, no forgiveness. Yes. Now, sis, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you with something. Give me, is that it? Yes, 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 yes. Give me Deuteronomy 32, 39. Cause I want you to understand what happened. It took place, and again, I feel bad for you. But now it's, this is when the healing process comes. Give me that Deuteronomy 32, 39. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I, am He. So this is God. He said, now I, even I, am He. Keep going. And there is no God with me. Uh -huh. I kill and I make alive. So God is saying, I'm the one that kills. I'm the one that makes alive. Keep going. I wound. Because when you got raped, that was your soul being killed. When you when you got touched, listen, look, sis, I understand I want you to bear with me. But when you got touched, that was your soul being killed. Because it says that in the Bible, if a man tries to force himself on a woman, that's considered murder. So God is saying, read that again. I kill and I make alive. Uh -huh. I wound and I heal. Now this is the time for healing, sister. And this is when you want to go ahead and put your faith in the Lord. Because I understand what happened. That time that man tried to kill your soul. But now this is by, this is not by coincidence. This is by design. You let these men of purple and now get your soul healed. So now this is when the healing comes. This is now when healing takes place. This is now where we have the faith in Jesus Christ. Give me that in Revelations. I want <laughs> Revelations 14, 12. This is our mission statement right here. According to the Bible. If you look on the back of our shirts, this is what's on the back of our shirts. Read what you got. The book of Revelations, chapter 14 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Here is the patience of the saints. Because one thing you gotta do is you gotta have patience. You gotta have patience. I understand that, sister, but listen, and I, I, I'm gonna explain that. You said 50 years, check this out. But read it. Here are they that keep the commandments of God uh -huh. and the faith in Christ in, in Jesus. So you gotta keep the commandments and have that faith. You gotta have that faith in Jesus. Now you said for 50 years, right? Check this out, sister. Genesis 6 and 1. Because you think 50 years is a long time? 50 years is nothing according to God. Check this out, I'm gonna read it. What's going on, boss man? Stick around, stick around. Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born unto them. Right. That the sons of God saw the daughters of the men that they were fair. So this is in the beginning of times in Genesis. You had sons of men. And uh, you had uh, sons of God and sons of men. So there's a difference. You have sons of, how you doing sister? Sons of God and then sons of men. Now who do you think the favorites are? The sons of God. And then you have sons of men. This is before these nations was created, before the 12 tribes was created, before any nation was, was made. Sons of God and sons of men. Now check this out. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. So now they say, the sons of God are saying, hey, these daughters of man, they look fair. Now check this out. And they took them wives of all which they chose. So now they laid with them. They intervened. Now how did God feel about this? And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. That what? That my spirit shall not always strive with man. Now don't you think God seen that? God seen that, and he said, therefore, my spirit is not always gonna strive in y'all. Because you disobey me, now I'm taking my spirit away from you. And we knew the laws, we knew right from wrong. But therefore, he said, you know what, I'm taking my spirit away from you. And what happened after that? Because now there's a penalty. Because you said for 50 years, I gotta be patient for 50 years, check this out. For that he also is flesh. Uh -huh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So now, God said because of that, I'm restricting your lifespan to 120 years most. So you're thinking 50 years, 50 years is nothing. When you read in the Bible, people lived up to six, seven, eight, nine hundred years. That's right. You understand that? So that's wow. 
So that's a penalty when we break God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. You understand that? How you doing, sister? Any questions? No, I know all about this. You know all about it. Yeah. So help me I've understand. been studying it myself. So then help me understand. I'm looking at the picture. Something's off. Let me see. Maybe you tell me. It's, 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 this is the truth. They, they, they've been lying to us for years. And they have been lying to us. And this is now, this is where we get back with the Lord God. Because we need faith. We need hope. Yeah. Now, give me the second Thessalonians 2 and 1. I want you all to listen to this. Because think about this. We're in the last days, right? And in the last days, we got to be on our square. We got to be armored up with this Bible. Because we just seen about, what, three, four days ago, a black woman get killed. And uh, Illinois, Springfield, Illinois. Nowadays, we call for protection, and now we end up getting a bullet in our head. And then what we would do, a march, we'll march, we'll vote, we'll protest, and then we'll think we'll have this faith in this book. But it's obvious we're doing something wrong. Right. So it's what are we doing wrong? How can we get right with the Lord? Hold that. Give me Hosea 5, 15. Think about all the crime that's happening, all the babies that's being killed. Why we're being gunned down, last hired, first fire, barely making ends meet. And God is allowing this to happen. Hey, how? let's look at this right here. Why would God allow slavery to happen? When there was plenty of people getting raped, plenty of people getting killed. Check this out. We're going to rewind. The book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 15. Uh -huh. And I will go and return to my place uh -huh. till they acknowledge their offense. First thing we got to do, we have to acknowledge our offense. We have to acknowledge what are we doing wrong. Because we were thinking, hey, look, are you, are you living as a child of God? Yes, of course. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Hey, sister, are you living according to the Bible? Yes. I go to church every Sunday. But the Bible says, no, we don't acknowledge our offense. We have to be honest with ourselves. We got to say, I know for the SH. Wow. I'm going to tell you, sister, you do have offenses. Hey, you, you do have, hey, I struggle too sometimes. But we all have to go ahead and we have to walk in perfection. Read it again. I will go and return to my place. Meaning God's watching you all. And he said, you know what? I'm going to turn my back when y'all lives is getting jacked up. I'm going to give y'all the middle finger because y'all gave me the middle finger. Keep going. Do they acknowledge their offense? Once we acknowledge what you did wrong, then maybe we could get right. But first off, we got to acknowledge that we're full of it. Keep going. And seek my face. Uh-huh. In their affliction... When we're getting afflicted, when we get a knee on our neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, when we're getting gunned down at a supermarket, gunned down in a church, gunned down in our bed, in our affliction, they will seek me early. Then we're going to say, oh God, oh God, please God, why God? God, why did you allow this to happen? Meaning I got to jack your life up because y'all living in sin. We all living in sin. That's right. All right? So it comes down to being honest. You know what? This sounds good. Give me that Ezekiel. Ezekiel 31, 30. This sounds good, but it comes down to application. You, 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 but sis, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we're bringing out the word. Hey, this sound, check this out. Before you leave, I got to give this to you. This be my last one. Ezekiel 33, 30. Book of Ezekiel, <laughs> chapter 33 and verse 30. Uh -huh. Also, the son of man. The children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. Uh -huh. And speak one to another, even one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh from the Lord. So this is going on today. Hey, we out here, we teach the word of God. Hey, yo, y'all come here, this. listen to this, listen to what these brothers are saying. Keep going. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. Just like how you can. You walked up, right? Keep going. And they sit before thee as my people. Right? And we, we sit or we stand today. And they hear thy words. Right? But they will not do them. We hear the words, but we're still not going to do it. I can tell you where you're going wrong, now it's up to you if you do it. I can tell you where you're going wrong, now it's up to you if you do it. 
But it's Bible prophecy. That happened back then, it's happening now. We're gonna hear the word, we're gonna like it, but we're still not gonna do it. And check this out, keep on. For with their mouth, they show much love. But their heart goeth after their co co covetousness. Now, through their mouth, hey, we some prayer warriors. We love God, we worship God, we can talk in many tongues. But our heart, meaning our mind, we go after our own desires. Keep going. Because I see you looking at that clock, and it's like you still. It's compelling you. Check this out, sis. Let this marinate. Put the phone in your pocket. Let this marinate, and you can go off. I'm not going to hold you hostage. I'm not. But I, this, look, this is for your own comfort, because this is Bible prophecy and what's going to happen. All right? Keep reading. Brother, I want you to listen to this too, boss man. Listen to this. And lo! Thou art unto them as a very lovely song. This word that we're teaching is a very lovely song. Because like, hey, Jesus Christ is a black man. I'm an Israelite. I'm going to get to rule in the kingdom of heaven. That's a lovely song. Now with that lovely song, what do we do? We hear it over and over. We can repeat it. We listen to every instrument, every melody. Right? So this, this Bible here becomes a very lovely song. Keep going. One that has a pleasant voice. Uh-huh. And can play well on an instrument. Right. For well, they hear the words, but they do them not. Again, we hear this, but we won't apply it. Now, what's going to happen? Future prophecy, what's going to happen? And when this cometh to pass. When it comes to pass. Meaning, again, this is Bible prophecy. When it comes to pass, what? Lo, it will come. It will come. Because God is not going to be slack in his laws. Anytime we read, thou shalt not, or it shall surely come to pass, keep going. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. When, when, what time is that going to happen? No, I want you to pay attention. That's why I said you was looking at your phone and went whoop over your head. Read that part again. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. When it comes to pass, what you think the it is? It is when you will look. And when will we know? When? Do we know right now? When are we going to know? Which is when? There's a day. There we go. When he comes. Because this day that's going to happen for Armageddon Judgment Day. Where the Lord's going to come down and we're going to go ahead. All our sins is going to bring forth. And then we're going to have to pay for what we did. So read this part again. And when this cometh to pass, uh -huh. lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. That's when you're going to realize, oh snap, I should have went and stopped and listened to the brothers instead of going off looking at my phone. But guess what? When that happens, there's no second chance. There's no second chance. So that says, if you want to walk up, that's fine. Now, I just want to give you that. I wanted to mark you. I wanted to mark you because look. When it comes, when it happens, there's no second chance. Right now, this is our second chance. The first time the Lord flooded the earth. And he says, and he only saved eight people. And now he says, you know what? I'm not gonna go ahead and destroy this earth by water no more. How's he gonna do it? By fire. So he says, I'm gonna go ahead and destroy this earth by fire. So now when the fire comes to pass, that's when we're gonna realize I should I should have paid attention. But is it, is it too late? Is it too late? No, at that time, when it comes to pass, it will be too late. Right? Right now, it's not too late. But we don't want to abuse the grace. All right? We don't want to abuse the grace. All praises. This is all praises. All right, all right, all right. All praises. All right, well, okay, well, I thank you for your time, sis, and again, that man's gonna pay for what he did, just make sure keep the commandment. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is